Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Cache Virtual College Fair. We've got an exciting session today with the Colorado School of Mines. A couple housekeeping items before we get started. First off, note that your camera and microphone are off, so our presenters can't see or hear you. To that end, please use the Q&A button to type your question to the presenters at any time. Be advised as well, we've got additional sessions on the StriveScan website, so if you have interest in another institution, go ahead and sign up at your leisure. Also note that a recording of this session is being taken and will be posted to strivescan.com slash cache. Those behind us will turn it over to the Colorado team. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for having us today and uh, great to be here with you all. Uh, my name is Mackenzie Johnson. I am one of the admissions counselors here at Colorado School of Mines. I manage areas such as uh, Texas, Montana, uh, Northwest Colorado, uh, so if you're one of those, you're mine. Uh, otherwise, you're my coworkers, and, and they're pretty cool too. So I'll be giving your info session today. This is our prospective student information session. So I'm going to share my screen with you so we can get what we're doing. And then uh, this covers student life, academics, and then goes into some of the next steps of applying to Colorado School of Mines. I'm also joined by Ben, who's a current student. And then in the background, you'll see Yvonne and Louisa, who are two of my coworkers. So feel free to put any questions you have into the chat and they'll be answering those. Um, otherwise, Ben, do you want to introduce yourself and give a little bit of background of being a student? Yeah, sure. So hello, my name is Ben. I'm currently a senior at Mines in mechanical engineering. Uh, I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri, but I now live full time in Colorado. Uh, I was in one of the theme learning communities my freshman year on campus. I'm assuming we'll be talking about those uh, during the session, um, so we'll go more into that later. I'm also the president of the rock climbing club on campus um, and am planning, at least, on uh, getting my master's at Mines, uh, also in mechanical engineering. Um, still currently applying for that, though, so that's not like 100% locked in yet, but yeah, that's me. Great, thank you so much. So I'll be yielding to Ben throughout the presentation to give you the student perspective because I think that's really important to our story here at Minds. And at the end, we'll have some time for Q&A. Uh, so again, feel free to put any questions you have in the chat and we'll, we'll cover those at the end. And uh, without further ado, we're gonna skip past the videos in this presentation today, just since uh, we're in non-optimized mode. Um, but I wanna start off by talking about what it means to be an ore digger. Uh, so I, I think our community is so special. It, it's not just about being a student in STEM, it's, it's about what you do with it. Uh, there are students, they're tinkerers and they're kind of nerdy and they're, they're free to be themselves. And uh, so it's a really unique community you get to be a part of where you are a nerd in STEM, but you're also free to pursue those other areas that you're passionate about. Um, we have a few events uh, called M Climb and E Days that really bookend this entire experience that speak to us. So I'll have uh, Ben explain those. Um, but Ben, do you kind of want to describe a little bit about what being an ore digger means to you and why that's special? Yeah, so I mean, to me, I guess it's just um, oh, that's a that's a hard question. Starting <laughs> off hard, not easy for me to do it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Mines is one big community, um, so I guess being in rigor means just being a part of that. Um, the student body here is like super super cooperative. Um, there is no competition between students at all. Um, everyone works together on everything, um, and so I guess to me, it's just being a part of that really tight knit community. A couple of the events that I mentioned that, I, that really speak to this community. Uh, the top middle picture there, with that's Vasey. She's in a green shirt, says math is sexy. She's one of our student ambassadors as well. That's a picture from e or M Climb, which is one of the first events that occurs right away in your freshman year at Mines. What we do is we ask that you bring a rock from your hometown. Now, if you're coming from places that don't necessarily have the biggest of rocks, that's okay. You can borrow one of ours. Like, Ben, I've seen St. Louis, Missouri. I know you don't have 10-pound rocks just laying around. Uh, or come from a special place. It's not your hometown. Uh, but this represents you and your personality, where you come from. So then you and your entire entering class at their rocks and their special place from all over the world, take it to mines with them and then climb with it three miles up our M, which is on the side of Mount Zion in Golden, Colorado. And three miles might sound like a long ways, but you move at a snail's pace and lined up along the entire road up there is every single club, organization, and campus involvement opportunity we have here at Mines welcome you to campus, teach you the fight song, they have free food snacks and popsicles. So it's a fun climb, I promise. And then you take your rock, you add to the M, we throw white paint all over it. So as you can see, it gets really messy. And then it sits up there for four years while you get your degree. And then when you're about to graduate, we bust you back up there. So then luckily you don't have to make that climb twice and you go and get your rock. And so what this symbolizes is you come in and bring this piece that represents you. 
then you make the climb together, which represents getting your degrees together, and then you leave, you get to take a piece of that uh, community with you and you're an ore digger for the rest of your life. Uh, so Ben, you've done a couple of these. Do you want to talk about your experience? Yeah, I mean, the M-Climb, you kind of hit the nail on the head. It's, it's really fun. Um, it's a great time. Uh, you do get quite messy. Uh, definitely wear clothes you don't care about. Um, the shoes that I wore did not survive. Uh, they got thrown away the next day. They were very, very destroyed. Um, also, definitely wear lots of sunscreen. I made the mistake of wearing a sleeveless shirt and no sunscreen, and I ended up with a giant red V on my neck. Not that fun, but the rest of it was great. Um, yeah, some of my friends are like trying to memorize where they put their rocks, but um, you know, there's going to be three plus years of rocks on top of that, so not sure how successful it will be at getting theirs back. And I think the fun of it is getting to take someone else's rock home because then you know what they hiked it up there too. So <laughs> adds the extra fun to it. Yeah, I and do the remember, other kind of talk. Oh, go ahead, Ben. Mine is somewhere in the top right corner. <laughs> somewhere yeah, up there. Mine's. Look for Ben's. <laughs> uh, the other one I want to talk to you about is E Days. It stands for Engineering Days. It's a I think a good example of it is the top left picture there. Uh, this is display its names for every major we have here at Mines. And I don't know if I'm right about this one, Ben, but I get the vibe it's our students' favorite event because during this time we don't have class. <laughs> and so they shut down campus on that Friday. So there's no homework exams or anything. It's just time for our students to take a break and revel in that ore digger spirit because they work really hard throughout the school year. Uh, so it starts off with this event called the Ore Cart Poll. This is where we take our entire student body, staff and faculty, along with Blast of the Borough, who is our live donkey mascot, all the way down to the Capitol building in downtown Denver, where the governor signs a declaration that declares the official start of E-Days at Mines. And the rest of the week is jam-packed with concerts, activities, and events. Uh, you see the cardboard boat race there. This is my personal favorite event, uh, because in this one, your only required materials are cardboard and duct tape. And with that, you have to build a vessel that's going to survive Clear Creek Canyon, which is a river that runs parallel to our campus in downtown Golden. Uh, and mind you, this event is in April. And so as you can see in that picture, and if you're not from Colorado, it's not the warmest time to be standing in a river in Colorado. I think it's, it's snowed three out of the four ones that I, I've seen. Uh, and most don't survive. I mean, the boats, the students obviously survive, but most boats don't survive. And that's, that's kind of the fun of it. Uh, and the entire event culminates in a uh, concert and a fireworks show. And the fireworks show is huge. You can see it all the way from the airport. They launch it off from the top of the M. And it's put on by our Explosives Engineering Club. So if you like blowing things up, it's a fun one to be a part of. Uh, do you have any favorite memories from your E-Days experiences, Ben? Yeah, I got a couple. The fireworks display is, is the most like insane fireworks show I've ever seen in my life. Um, my freshman year, it started off, there was a guy standing on a hill with a flamethrower. Like, that's... There were, there were actual, like, I think they just filled barrels with explosives because um, they were, like, proper, like, mushroom cloud explosions. Like, half of it wasn't, I don't think it was fireworks. I think they just, like, actually just filled barrels with explosive powder. Um, the ore cart poll was really fun because afterwards there were, like, all these posts on, like, Twitter of people who, like, didn't really know about mines. And there were people just being like, hey, there's this weird protest with, like, a mine cart and a donkey like walking through downtown Denver, like anyone know what's going on? <laughs> so it's pretty fun to be a part of that and to get to walk straight down the highway. And we think Blaster's the name of our, our donkey. We think he's going to lead the revolution. <laughs> but it's not all fun and games. I'm going to walk you through a little bit of the basics to kind of give you a high-low overview of what we're about here at Mines. Uh, starting at the top left there, uh, we got 5,200 and some change for our undergraduate enrollment. Uh, we like that number. We don't plan on growing far from there because that's how we value hands-on and team-based learning environments in the classroom that we're going to talk about in a second. And then we're at 55.5% Colorado residents. Uh, we have all 50 states represent our campus as well as over 85 countries. And we're at 92% for our first-year sophomore retention rate. Uh, what this number means, as you're looking around at universities, I highly recommend checking into this number because it's directly tied to academic support programs for students. So what it tells us is of the first year students that joined us in fall 2019 for their freshman year, 92% of them were still here at Mines, still pursuing a STEM degree and still meeting their academic expectations at the middle of their sophomore year in fall 2020. Uh, that's pretty good nationally. Uh, we help students get there through free one-on-one academic tutoring. Our Center for Academic Sport and Advising helps plan your schedule at majors, minors, whatnot, make sure you try to graduate on time. And then our professors help with open door policies throughout the week. So that's an option for you going to get help on homework, ask questions. And uh, now about you, Ben, I didn't love raising my hand in the classroom when I was in school. And this is a really great option for me. 
Uh, as well as because our university is small and tight knit, your professors, they know your name and they call on you by name in the classroom and know when you don't show up <laughs> and so please show up and invite you on research projects. And so I think that environment really helps our students thrive academically here. Uh, ben, do you have any comments about your interactions with professors and that valuable experience? Yeah, all the all the Mines professors are, are super awesome. Um, they're all really friendly. They're all incredibly passionate um, and ex honestly excited about what they're teaching. Um, and they're all super willing to, to meet with you outside of office hours. Like if you can't make it to their office uh, and you really need to get a question answered, you just go talk to them um, and they'll either help you on the spot or, or make a meeting time with you. Um, yeah, so all the professors are awesome. Uh, I've had like no bad experiences. Yeah, 97% of our classes are taught by faculty too. And also we're at a 17 to one student faculty ratio. Uh, the last stat I want to point out here on this screen is our female enrollment. Uh, I work specifically with our female applicants and helping more women pursue STEM degrees. And this semester actually worked at 33 and a half percent, which is an increase that I didn't have anything to do with here. That's just a general increase in female interest in STEM degrees out of Gen Z. Uh, we're actually home to the large society of women engineers in the entire country. If you haven't heard of them, they're a national organization. So they have chapters on campuses all over the U.S. and we're fortunate at the largest, as well as the largest student organization we have on campus in general, and over 700 female members. So leadership is just on our campus, which means when you're walking around, it really feels 50-50 because of that. Take a break from talking about that and going to academics. So majoring of minds, like I mentioned before, we value hands-on team-based learning in the classroom environment. And we have 39 options to choose from to do that. Uh, a few of the more popular ones are mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, uh, and you could even speciali specialize in these. For instance, you could be mechanical engineering to major with a specialization in aerospace engineering or biomedical engineering or computer science is five of them if you specialization in robotics, artificial intelligence. So uh, do we have to dive a little bit deeper into your degree program if you choose to do so? And then we customize even further with having 52 minors and areas of special interest. And area of special interest, we abbreviate this to ASI. This is two or three classes in areas just interesting to you. So it could be in your major, or it could be out of your major. This is where you find my personal favorite one, explosives engineering. So that's where you make the fireworks. And fun fact about this one, you don't take out the fun facts from today. I hope you remember this one because it's pretty cool. It is if you are a chemical engineering major and you get a minor in explosives engineering, then you're automatically put on the government watch list. And I think that's fantastic. So that's a goal of yours. We got you covered. Uh, I may have planned a few experiments at the airport if that's the case, but if you want your resume, we got it. And as far as teaching these classes in a really unique way, uh, at Minds, we value those hands-on and team-based learning environments in and outside the classroom. And the reason we do that is because employers wanted from us. They wanted students that had that real-world experience by the time they graduated from Minds. So don't make you wait until you got in the real world, start doing the cool, fun stuff. You could start right away in your freshman year with this class called Cornerstone. So that's your intro to design at Minds. And that sets you for success in the remaining three key areas, which are field session, undergraduate research, and capstone. So all four value hands-on team-based learning, getting out in the world and learning by doing, and also getting out in the world and doing good in the world, which are our main pillars here at Minds. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Ben to talk a little bit about his academic experience, his major, some of the exciting projects he's worked on. Yeah, so mechanical engineering specifically, um, basically every single class is hands-on in some form. Um, it's incredibly rare to have a mechanical class that doesn't have a project that involves you actually creating something. Um, just for our field session, you make multiple things. The final project, at least when I was in it, was built um, machining uh, all the parts of a little derby car so that you could race. Um, I used to have that sitting around, but I don't know where it is right now. Um, uh, the classes I'm in right now, uh, I'm taking a composites class, so we're mechanics and materials and composites. There's a project for that class for my project. Um, we're actually going to make composite parts and then impact test them. So we're going to like build something that fires rocks at them. Um, I'm in fluids two right now. We're designing 3D printing an airfoil and we're going to go test it in a wind tunnel on campus. So lots and lots of hands-on stuff beyond just like the field session and senior design stuff. Um, basically every single class is going to have some kind of hands-on project. 
Yeah, I think that experience, and I, I love turning over students because they, they just really describe it best. Like I could tell you all the facts, the facts and figures and whatnot, but it's really about the fun stuff you get to do in the classroom. Like I've heard about students uh, designing Hyperloop pods and smart showers. Uh, there's a group converting a Volkswagen bug from gas to electric. Uh, right before COVID, some of our environmental engineers traveled down to Morocco and they competed in a worldwide environmental engineering competition. It got second place in the entire world, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, Morocco got first, which I think is a little biased, but I, I will take an honest second. And so it, it's not just reading a textbook or grocery an exam and listening to someone like Ben and I talk at you all day. <laughs> it is getting out in the world and learning by doing. I think that's really important to get out of uh, this experience here. Uh, so we are going to skip over the last video because Ben gave you all those fun examples. We're going to change gears and talk about student life. Uh, like I said, I love our students. They are so dedicated in the classroom, but they're also really passionate outside the classroom. We have 383 student organizations on our campus. Um, and with that, it, it ranges from we have fraternity and sorority life, and um, we have 12 musical and performing arts ensembles. Uh, ben, I mentioned our living learning communities, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but it, like I mentioned in the beginning, it's not just about being an ore digger. Um, it is about being curious and being yourself. Uh, and so it minds you're free to explore those other areas. Uh, like my favorite example is if you go skiing in the mountains of Colorado and someone tells a chemistry joke, but these kids are gonna get it. <laughs> those types of relationships that you build. Um, and as far as getting involved, it doesn't just stop on campus, it expands to beyond campus. Uh, we're about an hour and a half from 12 ski resorts in Colorado. We have a plethora of hiking trails right around campus. Uh, ben, do you want to go into a little more uh, detail about what you're involved in and touch on some of these areas on the screen in particular? Yeah, so do um, you want me to talk about the learning communities right now or is that that's still later? Right now? Okay. So uh, my freshman year, I was in one of our theme learning communities. Um, basically what those are is it's an optional thing that you can join um, as a freshman living in the dorms. Um, there's a couple different ones. The one that I was in was the Adventure Leadership Theme Learning Community, which is basically um, people who like to do outdoorsy stuff. So hiking, camping, skiing, uh, climbing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so essentially the way they work is if you join one, you live together with the other members of that community on a set floor in a residence hall. Um, so that kind of becomes your family. Um, I'm still living together with people that I lived with first year my roommates right now in my house i have four roommates all of them are people that i live with um that's still my friend group been my friend group for four years um still really involved with the incoming years of it it's, it was a really awesome experience um honestly joining it was probably one of the best decisions i've ever made uh in terms of like extracurricular activities i spend most of my time in the mountains uh going hiking climbing skiing uh i'm from missouri we don't have skiing so i got into skiing at mines uh, I've skied like 20 days every season, uh, which is which is pretty good, <laughs> especially for being busy. So it's pretty easy to get out there. Um, and mines and the ORC on campus, the Outdoor Recreation Center, there's a ton of different resources to like learn how to do it and get into it and explore all that stuff if you've never done it before. Thank you, Ben. He's also being modest. He works for us, and that's one of his activities, too. I, I'd argue it's our favorite one for him. But <laughs> uh, we also have the full range of Division II athletics. Uh, I think a lot of people are surprised about that we're the nerdy school in Colorado, and we're really good at sports. Uh, I've been undefeated for five years in a row in the regular season of football. We're excited for homecoming this weekend. Um, as well as uh, we do have study abroad options available if, if you're interested in those. And uh, with those options, we include a first year abroad experience where you can have a cohort of mine students that travel to your sister university in the south of France and study engineering. So lots of areas to get involved in. It's really how you design uh, your experience here and totally up to you. Uh, okay, we're going to switch gears and talk about applying. So if you are a senior in high school and you have not applied, feel free to take pictures of the slide if you want to. Um, and you can always reach out to us with further questions uh, or put them into this chat. This is, this is a perfect time. I know it's a lot of information, so feel free to ask any questions. We are happy to help you. Um, so at Minds, we consider ourselves a holistic application. What that means is that academics are important, but academics are not everything to get you into Minds. If you're within our middle 50% of our GPA, say like a a 3.75 with all A's and B's. That's great, but there's no hard cut numbers we don't accept below, and we need more information than that from you. Um, we look at things such as your teamwork abilities, your leadership abilities, uh, the rigorous classwork you've taken, as well as your interests in STEM and your interests in minds, just to name a few. 
Uh, when you're looking at some of the requirements for the application, we require is a high school transcript on file with us, official or unofficial, as well as a completed application. We have two options. I'll talk a little bit more about this on the next screen. Uh, we have our Minds Online application. We call our Golden application, as well as we are on the Common application. Uh, it doesn't matter to me which one you fill out. Uh, both are great. Uh, I'd say if you're applying to a ton of schools nationwide, Common App might be a better fit for you. It could save you some time. Uh, or if Minds is your number one choice, or if you're applying to just a few schools here and there, Minds Online application might be your better fit. Just because it took me 20 minutes to fill out and I was trying really hard. Uh, the Common App asks a lot more questions we just don't necessarily need. Also, Colorado as a state just deemed itself all its public in universities test optional for the foreseeable future. Uh, fun fact, we're a public school in Colorado. Uh, so what that means is whether you submit test scores, don't submit test scores, submit them late, test scores cannot hurt you. They can only help you. So we, we weight the other areas of your application a lot more densely than we do your test scores. And then uh, S additional essays and letters of recommendation are completely optional. If you want to include those, that's fabulous. If not, it's totally up to you. So as far as the application itself, um, we, like I mentioned we had those two applications. They both have the same requirements. In the application, like I mentioned, we don't require any essays or letters of recommendation, but there are free response areas in the application that are not optional. So there's one area that talks of for you to elaborate on your activities, awards, and interests. Uh, another for you to respond to a prompt about Florence Caldwell, who's our first female engineering graduate, how you relate to what she went through. And another one is just why mine? So that you could really put anything in here. If, if, again, if mine's your dream school, I want to know about it. Uh, if you struggled freshman year, but you did better, uh, explain how that worked. Or if COVID was really hard for you and you had some lower grades you're concerned about, uh, talk about that experience and how you learn from it. And um, it's really an area for you to elaborate on. There's no word count limit, no expectation uh, for it. It's definitely quality over quantity. Just put something in there for us. And then when you're looking at your timeline to get these decisions in, uh, this, again, this applies to my seniors right now. So if you are not a senior, just make sure to check in with us before August for your senior year because all this information could change. We want to make sure that you have the right information. So our application did open in August and we have a priority deadline of November 1st. If you're marking things on your calendar, I would make November 1st your final day to apply. Reason being is that our acceptance rate drops off dramatically after November 1st. And so it's in your best interest to be in our largest pool of acceptances. And so I'd make November 1 your final day. And that is application and transcript on file. You can always send in letters of recommendation, additional essays later if you'd like to via your applicant portal. And if you get an application by November 1st, we'll get you a decision by December 21st. So hopefully you can go into the new year with some positive news. Uh, if you receive a positive admission decision from Minds, you have until May 1st to let us know whether you will be attending Minds. So it's non-binding, non-committal. We go by National Decision Day to have you say yes or no to your acceptance. Um, also, in your acceptance, you will uh, receive a merit-based scholarship. So applying by November 1st gets you priority consideration for that merit-based aid. So again, highly recommend that one. Again, if you have any questions on this, please let us know. Um, I do want to switch gears and talk about paying for college. So like I mentioned, just by applying to mines, you're automatically considered for merit-based scholarships. So what this means, we take your GPA and test scores, put that into a metric, and it spits on numbers just automatically taken off your tuition at the university. So no extra application necessary on that one. And what's nice about this is that everything else is stackable. So mines accepts any and all external scholarships you could possibly find. So whether that is online, through your counselor, through your community, I got a scholarship I found on the internet just to be left-handed. So I recommend applying for everything and anything you can because we will seriously take it all. Um, also, if you're accepted to Minds, that opens up all of our internal scholarships. So we have one application, good for four years. It opens in December. Um, it's our general scholarship application. It puts your name into a pool and you can be awarded anything out of that during your time at Minds. Uh, we also have our full ride scholarships that are competitive and worth applying. Uh, we, and then we have random one-off departmental and alumni donation scholarships. So again, I recommend applying for them all because they will all be stackable. Um, another study I want to mention on here uh, is that 85% of our uh, students do receive some type of additional scholarship to support their abilities here at Mines. And so with everything stockable, I highly recommend applying for those external ones because it can really knock off some numbers for you and, and be really helpful in that process. As far as other areas you can look into, I highly recommend applying for FAFSA. FAFSA is your general application for financial aid to the federal government. Uh, if you are looking at tennis schools, we're all going to tell you about this. And the number one thing that I hear from families is that they're not going to apply for it because they don't think they're going to get anything. But 
stat on the left over here um, is that 99.8% of our students can successfully utilize that information. So what this means is that with FAFSA, everyone gets offered a uh, loan. I don't even know any of y'all in the audience right now, but I can already guarantee every single one of you is going to get a $3,500 loan offer from FAFSA. And loans are a really viable option for paying for your college education. I know default rates can be scary. The national default rate for student loans is around 10 or 11%. But what this stat on the left means is that the mines default rate is 0.2% for our graduates. That means our students have basically no problem paying off their student loans after graduation, mostly due to high starting salaries. And you get a six month grace period upon graduation before interest starts kicking in. So all I'm saying is don't take it off the table. It could be really helpful. And if you have more questions on FAFSA, that link in the bottom there, finaid.minds.edu has some great resources. And you can reach out to our financial aid department uh, directly for more questions on that. All right, this is my last slide. This is also my favorite slide because it talks about the value of your education. So I don't know about you, Ben, when I was going through this process, I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> I was really concerned with getting into college and graduating from college, but I was not really thinking about what happened after that. I was not considering would I be employable? Would I be making the salary I intend to make? Uh, was my education gonna set me for, for, for success in my position? And so I really want you to ask these sorts of questions to the universities you're considering uh, because it's, it's not just about the sticker price on the door. It's about the value you get when you leave. So what Ben was talking about and I was describing with how, how we teach our classes is so unique. Uh, this is what you get from that unique experience is that uh, employers want to hire our majors because of how they're taught. So starting up on the left here, our average starting salary for 2019-2020 graduates was $73,322. What that puts us at is the number one best value college in the state of Colorado. That means for the price you pay to 10 mines, you're getting the best bang for your buck across all universities in Colorado, as well as our number 19 return on investment in the entire United States. So number one Colorado, number 19 nationwide. And then that orange bar at the bottom there, if you fast forward 10 years after you graduate, you're the highest paid person in your field in the entire West, so West of the Mississippi. And we don't just send you on your way and say best of luck getting those careers, we actually help you get them. Mines hosts the largest career fair twice a year in Colorado. Um, and if you want to look for, let's say, like Amazon, Google, Boeing, and every new little energy labs, uh, they apply to come to this career fair to hire mine students. So not just mine's graduates, mine students. That means they're hiring for internship, co-op, full-time employment, whatnot. That's because they know the mine's degree is valuable. Uh, ben, you've been to our career fair, right? Do you want to talk about your experience there? Yeah, the career fairs are pretty awesome. Um, they, like, it's a crazy number of companies. Um, I actually have an interview on Monday. Uh, for an internship from this past career fair so they work too um it's a great place to go for if you're looking for internships jobs after school uh you can go your freshman year when you don't know anything a lot of times it's the same recruiters that come every year so even when you know nothing and don't have any experience you can still go talk to the companies uh figure out what you're doing and then you come back later uh and they remember you they recognize you you have more experience now you stand a better chance of getting an internship so yeah, yeah. career fairs are an awesome resource. Oh yeah, we highly recommend going your freshman year, even if you're not looking for an internship, just to get a hang of the, the program, um, maybe get your name in, see what classes you can be taking to uh, work for those companies, your dream jobs, and get some free stuff. Uh, last stat I want to leave you with is that one on the far right there. Uh, it is 95% of our graduates report having a positive outcome within six months of graduation. Uh, every university puts out this stat. So again, I recommend asking. It asks, are you employed? Are you making the salary you intend to make? And is your education safe for success in that position? And so 95% of our students answered yes to that question. That's also in the middle of a pandemic, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, that is all that Ben and I have for you today. I want to ask Ben one more hard question before we turn it over and stop sharing our screening and gather around for questions. Um, it's been, uh, why did you choose Minds and why did you choose to stay at Minds? And if you had any advice for these students today, what would you give them? So the short answer for why I chose Minds is mountains are cool. Um, that's, that's the short version. It's Golden's really pretty. I'm from Missouri. I like mountains. They're right there. It's pretty awesome. Uh, the reason I stayed, I kind of touched on this a little earlier, is honestly the community uh, and the student body here and the people I've met are awesome. Um, and I, I just, I feel at home. And like, I don't think I would feel this at home anywhere else. Um, it's gold, it's awesome. And the Minds community is awesome. So that's why I stayed. Um, biggest recommendation uh, for incoming students, 
go to office hours. Uh, it helps a ton. It's so much better than sitting there and just being confused for hours and hours on end. Uh, I'm sure you've probably heard this a ton. If you've you know done other events like this for other schools, you're probably sick of hearing it. But you know, I heard it a ton when I was touring for schools. And then you know what I didn't do my freshman year at Mines? Go to office hours. So go to office hours. It makes your life so much easier. You can genuinely cut the time you spend doing your homework in half and you'll understand it better in the long run. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you for everyone joining us today. Uh, Dave, am I free to stop sharing my screen? All right, cool. Last thing I want to leave you all with is that email in the middle there, admissions at minds.edu. If you log off and think of anything today, feel free to reach out to us. The email looks general, but it routes right to your civic admissions counselor. And we're happy to answer your questions there. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll come back together and we'll turn it over to Mr. Dave. Thank you, Mackenzie. Minds team, great job. And for our attendees, thank you so much for joining us. No, we have a quick five question survey out on the StriveScan website. If you could review at your leisure, that'd be great. Also note, again, we have this session uh, being recorded, so it'll be available at strivescan.com slash cache. Again, a big thanks to our presenters and hope everyone has a great day. Bye everyone. Thank you.